So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmaduhu wa salli ala Rasul al-Kareem. Today I want to talk about the end of times, Passover, Ashura, from a perspective of Islamic eschatology. And after we have done that, then uh, we will talk about, and there's a very interesting connection, by the way, between Ashura, which is the Jewish Passover, and you'll see why I'm saying this, and the end times. But after I've discussed that, then I will discuss some of the fiqhi rulings uh, regarding Ashura and some of the fada'il, some of the benefits of fasting and uh, spending money on your family in the days of Ashura. And then after we go over some of the fiqhi rulings and sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu talk a little bit about the uh, grandson Hussein of the uh, who was uh, killed uh, Hussein radiallahu an and how that ties into the message of Ashura from its essential message and how this ties in with the Mahdi in the end of times okay so this is what I want to do now let me start with the first point I want to make. Now, I'm going to show you two videos, this video and another video, that is from a Jewish and then after that a Christian perspective. Because as you know, Ashura has to do with partly the people of the book. One of them is that was the day that Musa والسلام, got liberated. And so the Jews in Medina were fasting and the Prophet said, we are closer to Musa than you, so we will fast. And the Prophet had decided to fast two days so that we will, if you fast one day, then we'll do two days. So he wanted to fast the ninth and the tenth. I'm going to talk about that and how that relates to the end of times, that whole scenario. Now, the Jewish word for Ashura is called Passover. Passover is when the Jewish people, Bani Israel, was liberated, as you'll see in the hadith that I'll show later, was liberated from Fir'aun. Now, please keep in mind from the very beginning some of the commonalities between Fir'aun and Dijjal. Dijjal will say, I'm Rabb, I'm your Rabb, I'm your, I'm your God. And Fir'aun says, I'm also. And I control all, as Fir'aun says, what well, I control these rivers. You can't get this water without my permission. And the Jal will say the same thing. Here's water and fire. And the Jal will pursue all those that oppose him and his agenda and his lifestyle. And he, like Fir'aun was, will feel like he has now cornered the Muslims and now he's going to do away with them. But at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So what does Isa alayhi salatu wasalam have to do with Passover? We'll be discussing that because we're talking about end of times. So in that moment of uh, great fear and danger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send special guests, you can say, uh, to help the Muslims in their struggle after the Muslims have proven themselves to be true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then at the end, if I remember, I want to talk about the foundational meaning and essence of our shura and how that relates to the end of times. Okay. So now that I've given this in introduction, now let us go ahead and watch this video over here, okay? <clears throat> there is a, a tradition that happens toward the end of the Seder where you open your door for Elijah the Prophet to come and announce that the Messiah has arrived. And I've lived long enough to worry that that's not going to happen. And because I've lived long enough to worry that that's not going to happen, sometimes I don't really believe it. And so I work really hard, as soon as the Seder begins, to allow myself to really hope. To hope that despite everything I know, the world is going to be better right now. 
and then when I open up my door, Elijah's going to be there. It's a tradition for some of us to open the door and have the children be the ones, and sometimes to play a game and someone sneaks out and they dress up like Elijah the prophet. But I really, really hope that this year will be the year. We're called by the Torah itself, by the Bible, to remember to be just with a stranger, to be kind to the stranger. To... So I'll leave it at that. So one of the reasons for the Passover, the Ashura in the Jewish tradition is because, well, the Passover happened because of the liberation of, from Fir'aun. But its final result is what? Is the Messiah will come. And the Elijah Muhammad, uh, the prophet Elijah uh, will come, meaning I think it's Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam. He will come and he will announce the Messiah is here. So this is in the Jewish tradition. So they also connect the Passover with the end of times, meaning in the Jewish tradition. Just keep in mind as we're going through this, so that when we finally come to the words of the Prophet وسلم, it will have, give us a deeper insight. Now let's look at the Christian aspect of this. So now that we've understood the connection between Musa and the Jewish tradition of Ashura, now let us look at Jesus. The, you can say the symbolism in, in a sense of end times, right? The Messiah himself. And so what do Christians say about the Passover? Okay, Ashura is as follows. That somewhere down the line, we have strayed from the original path. This what he's talking about is that they changed the Ashura from the Jewish lunar calendar of, uh, of the Ashura to uh, the pagan ritual of Easter. Easter became their, the Christian Ashura. So he's saying that's wrong. We need to go back to the Passover because that's what Jesus said and so on and so forth. So you'll hear this. This evidence not only exists, my friends, it is irrefutable. It's undeniable that not only did the early Christians keep Passover, but that it was the original intent of our Messiah to do just that. After all, Jesus, or Yeshua in the original Hebrew, commanded us from his own lips that we should keep the Passover when he said at his own Passover, which we call the Last Supper, do this in remembrance of me. In that very moment, he, for the very first time, connected the exodus of Egypt to the exodus and redemption of all mankind from sin. So that's his interpretation, but my interpretation is that in that the day of the Passover where Musa was freed, he had his Last Supper before he left. And you'll find this in the Hadith literature. If I have time, I will show you the narration that mentions this aspect. The Prophet Musa aspect is well known in the Hadith literature, but there is a Hadith that also mentions the Christian aspect. So anyway, Ashura is... So on the day of Ashura, Isa والسلام, has something to do with it. And this is the day where what? The, uh, you can say the Holy Grail, well... I'll talk about that one day, where Musa, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, the Messiah, did a dua to Allah, Allah, anzil alayna ma'idatan, send down to us a table of food, takunu eidan lana, so that it will be a, what, an eid for us, and it will be a sign for us, li awalina wal akhirina, will be a sign for the first of us and the last of us, this Supper. When did they have the supper? According to the Bible and according to the Hadith, they had this supper in Ashura. So, and Allah says this is a sign for the first of them and the last of them, meaning for us and the ones before us. It is a sign for us today because there is a reason Isa والسلام, had his last supper during the Passover, which has to do with Musa والسلام, Something to do with the end of times, as I will show you in the verses of the Quran. Okay? So now, what does he say? From the very blood of the true Passover lamb that would be spilled the very next day. 
The second piece of evidence is the Apostle Paul. We know that Paul kept and taught his churches to keep the Passover when he said in 1 Corinthians 5.8, Therefore let us keep the feast of Passover, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So now we have the Passover lamb himself telling us to keep it and remember him in the process. And we have Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit instructing all believers to quote, keep the feast with all sincerity and truth. Now this feast is that table that came down in the last supper. Now let me show you this event in the Quran and the how this connects to Ashura in the Hadith literature, inshallah ta'ala. And then I will tell you how these things are related. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Isa, qala Isa ibn Maryam, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, the son of Mary, said, Allahumma rabbana, O oh Allah, I ask you by all of your beautiful names, rabbana, anzil alayna, send down upon us ma'idatan, a table min as samai <coughs> and one day inshallah if i have time <coughs> i'll discuss what this ma'idatan is what is this table what does it mean but but send down as a table like we normally understand min as samai from the sky from the heavens litakunu eidan so that it will be an eid a special day for us Eidan li awalina wal akhirina for the first of us and the last of us. One way to see this, that this is Eid li awalina that Ashura was important in the first part in the first ummas of Musa and Isa, and Ashura is important in the last part of the ummah. Li akhirina for those that come after. The other way is. Akhirina is referring to the end times. So the Prophet ﷺ in one interpretation would establish this day as an Eid, which is Ashura. And the other interpretation is that this would become a, an Eid for the people in the end of times. So now we will discuss how that happens. But let's go back to the ay ayah first. Qala Isa ibn Maryam, Allahumma, over here I'll just mention, Allahumma means, O oh Allah, by all your names. By all of your names, including Ismul A'azam, your greatest name by which you accept du'as. So this is a very powerful uh, way of doing du'a. Allahumma Rabb. Allahumma Rabbana anzil alayna ma'idatan min as samai from the sky. Takunu lana eidan. So that it will be an eid li, aw, li awwalina for the first of us. Wal akhirina and the last of us. Ayatan mink. A sign from you. A symbol from you. This day of Ashura tells us something very special. Warzukna wa anta khayrul raziqin, and you provide for us because you are the best of providers. Qala Allahu, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala responded to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Inni munaziluha alaykum. I'm going to send this down to you. فَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَهُ مِنْكُمْ So whoever does kufr after this, of rejecting and not believing, فَإِنِّي عَذِّبُ عَذَابًا لَا يُعَذِّبُ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ Whoever rejects this now, whoever doesn't accept the, the Ashura, or whoever doesn't, after also there's another component to this, that of course if anyone sees a supper coming down from the heavens, from Jannah, food is coming down from Jannah, and you still reject it, so then you're going to get in trouble. Okay? So, now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these verses, and they connect with the day of Ashura. Why? Because this dua, according to hadith, as well as the Bible, was done on the day of Ashura. Okay, so now keep this in mind. Now I think we can move on to the hadith literature of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is the narration that I want to start off with. 
سمعت عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما يقول so, ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما he said حين صام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم عشورة when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fasted on the day of Ashura so the Prophet was fasting on the day of Ashura and I'm going to tell you the history of this because people think the Prophet started to fast when he went to Medina there's another riwayah that shows he actually was fasting when he was in Mecca. But then he was also seeing the Jews fast, so he asked them. And then he reiterated, well, they were already fasting in Mecca before. And now he was saying, now we, we have more rights than Musa. So it wasn't something that he just saw them do and then he did. But it seems more authentically he was already doing in from the days of Mecca, which I'm going to talk about later. Okay. So... حين صام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم عشورة ومر به السح ومر بالصيامه. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he uh, commanded of fasting, meaning encouraged for fasting. قالوا they said يا رسول الله أو Messenger of Allah إنه يوم تعزيمه تعزيمه اليهود والنصارى. This is a day that is honored by the Yahud and the Nasara, the Jews and the Christian. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, So the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم said, فَإِذَا كَانَ عَامُ مُقْبَلْ If the next year comes, إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ صَائِمَنَا الْيَوْمُ التِّسَعَةِ Because Ashura is the 10th of Muharram. So this, uh, the Prophet said, if the next month, next year comes, the next Muharram comes, we will also fast the 9th. To make it different. Okay? So, so, uh, so, يوم التسعة قال, so, Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما, he said, فَلَمْ يَعْتِ الْعَامِ المقبل, The next year never came because the Prophet وسلم, he passed away. حَتَّى تَوَفِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم, Until the Prophet وسلم, he passed away. <coughs> The Prophet وسلم, I want to make this clear, why did the companions say or that the Prophet commanded us? Okay. So the next narration makes that clear. Ruya an Bukhari wa Muslim Ghairuhuma Kadalika and Aisha Radiallahu anha and Quraishan kana tasumu yawmul ashura. So Imam Muslim and Imam Bukhari have quoted that Aisha says that Quraysh used to fast the day of Ashura. And this is the fast the Prophet used to command. Then when Ramadan came, the Prophet didn't command it anymore, but he kept it as a sunnah. And he then also saw the Jews are doing this. Right? So, أَنَّ قُرْعِيشَ كَانَتْ تَصُومُ عَشُورَ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ ثُمَّ مَرَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم بصومه when he, and the Prophet وسلم, commanded the fasting حَتَّى فُرِضَ رمضان, until Ramadan was made fard فَقَالْ مَا شَاءَ فَلْيَسُمْ وَمَا يَشَاءَ وَمَنْ شَاءَ أَفْتَرْ Whoever wants to fast can fast. Whoever doesn't want to fast, he doesn't have to fast. So, now what do we find out here? We find out that in the Jewish tradition, what is called the Passover, let me actually show that to you so that it's absolutely clear. I should have started off with what is the meaning of Passover. I just said it's Ashura. Passover is called Pasich in major Jewish holiday that celebrates the exodus of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, which occurs on such and such. They have their own dates that they have kind of like messed up. But those that were in Medina, the Jews were fasting on Ashura. Okay, so now... Uh, there are, by the way, the Jewish people celebrate this for seven days. So now there is a connection, not only between Musa and uh, Isa, but also Ibrahim والسلام, Because why? Because the Quraysh fasted on the day of Ashura. Why did the Quraysh fast on the day of Ashura? Because they were taught from Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail and they kept those you can say rituals going, like they had the Hajj going, so they also had the fast in the day of Ashura. So there are many blessings of this day, but the question I want to first deal with, what does it have to do with the end of times? Okay, so now let us 
after understanding this, let us turn to some more traditions of the Prophet ﷺ on the subject. And after these traditions of the Prophet ﷺ, we will then directly discuss what this has to do with the end of times. And then we'll go into the Hadith literature and the Fiqh rulings and then some comments at the end. Here's a source that collects a few sources together. This is from Musnad Ahmad. And over here, مَرَّ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِالنَّاسِ مِنَ الْيَحُودِ فَقَدْ صَامُوا يَوْمَ عَشُورَةٍ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed by some people of the Jewish community. They were fasting on the day of Ashura. فَقَالَ مَا هَذَا الصَّوْمُ The Prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم What is this fasting that you're doing? قَالُوا هَذَا يَوْمُ الَّذِي نَجِّي اللَّهُ مُوسَى وَبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ مِنَ الْغَرْقِ this is the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and Bani Israel from Fir'aun by drowning him. وَغَرَقَ فِيهِ فِرْعَوْنَ And Fir'aun drowned. وَهَذَا يَوْمَ إِسْتَوَتْ فِيهِ سَفِينَةُ عَلَى جُودِي And this is the day in which the boat of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam reached the Mount of Jud to find rest. Wa and then he said, فَصَامَ نُوهُ وَمُوسَى So Muh, Musa and Nuh, they both uh, fasted and شَكَرَ الله. They gave shukr to Allah. فَقَالَ نَبِيُّ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, أَنَا أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى I'm, I have more rights to Musa. I'm closer to Musa. وَأَحَقُّ بِصَوْمَ هَذَا يَوْمِ And I have more rights to fast on this day. فَمَرَّ سَحَابِهِ بِالصَّوْمِ So he commanded his companions to also fast on that day until the fasting of Ramadan was ordained and then this was made sunnah. And you also have <coughs> an exact same uh, from a different uh, narration from a different group of people uh, you have the exact, exact same wordings, absolutely exact same wordings, even though it's from a completely different chain. The chain says, مَرَّ النَّبِي مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ بِالنَّاسِ مِنَ الْيَحُودِ وَقَدْ صَامُوا يَوْمَ الْعَشُورَةِ So the Prophet passed by on the day of Ashura from in the Jewish community. قَالَ مَا هَذَا الْيَوْمَ الَّذِي He said, مَا هَذَا الصَّوْمُ What is this you're fasting? قَالُوا فَقَالُوا They said, هَذَا الْيَوْمَ الَّذِي نَجِّيَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى وَبَنِي إِسْرَائِيل uh, this is the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Musa and uh, Bani Israel from drowning. وَغَرَّكَ فِيهِ فِرْعَوْنِ And Fir'aun was the one that was drowned. وَهَذَا يَوْمَ اسْتَوَتْ فِيهِ سَفِينَ عَلَى جُودِي And this is the day in which the boat of Musa reached Judi and found rest. فَصَامَ uh, نُوهُ وَمُوسَى وَشَكَرَ اللَّهِ So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam they fasted to thank Allah azza wa jal. So فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. So the Prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم, الله عليه وسلم أَنَّ أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى وَأَحَقُّ بِصَوْمِ هَذَا يَوْمِ So I have more closeness to Musa and I have so and I have more rights to fast. فَمَرَّ سَحَابَهُ بِصَوْمِ So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded his companions to fast on that day. So Ashura is the day that Allah delivers the believers from their difficulties. And this will be the day throughout history where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deliver the believers out of their difficulties. But this is also the day that symbolizes to stand up against tyrants. And so Musa والسلام, stood up against a tyrant. Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet وسلم, stood up against a tyrant. And Isa والسلام, stood up against the Pharisees in the Roman Empire of his time. And again, when Muslims stand up against the tyrants of the day, then this day will come as a, you can say, a spiritual opening, a spiritual a victory from this from spiritual from the spiritual world what will the mahdi do the mahdi is going to stand up against the injustice and bring justice and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 
honor him with the same type of victory that he gave to the previous prophets. The same type of victory he gave to Musa والسلام, and Isa والسلام, said, this will be an ayah, a sign for you for the first ones and the last ones. This Ashura, don't forget Ashura. Ashura is the day Allah gives the believers a victory. Ashura is the day that Allah delivers the believers. It is the day that Allah saved Nuh. It is the day that Allah saved Musa والسلام, and the believers that were with him and Nuh والسلام, and the believers that were with him. And it was the day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised or soon after raised Isa والسلام, and gave victory to Christianity over Judaism at that time, the true Christianity. It is the day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors for victory for the believers. Takunu lana eidan lana. It will be a day of Eid. A day of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivering people from their difficulties. That is the day of Ashura. And people don't realize. And in this ummah, this process... But I'm going to talk, maybe I'm thinking more detail tomorrow. This process was started by Hussein, radiallahu anh. When the Khilafah was beginning to fall, Khilafah al-Rashidah was beginning to fall, it was Hussein, radiallahu anh, the grandson of the Prophet, who stood up and said, no, we cannot change from Khilafah to kingship. And he stood up against the, the tyrants of that time. Then what happened? Then Islam began to fall because he was killed, shaheed. But again, from the family of the Prophet, someone will stand up again and he will be given victory in the end times. And so here, again, in the Quran, you find a hint of that final coming back of Isa والسلام, and the victory of the Muslims. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said will be a sign for the believers in the beginning and in, in the in the first of them and the last of them. Let me just show you the exact wordings. Takunu lana, it will be for us Aidan li awalina for the first of us, wa akhirina and the last of us. Wa ayata mink any special sign from you. Meaning, ayata mink, meaning a special sign from you, O oh Allah. So there's a sign in this day of Ashura that connects with Musa and connects with Prophet Isa والسلام, And as you heard, the Jewish people also connect it with what? The Jewish people connect it with the coming back of the Messiah. And the Christian people know that the Last Supper was all about the message of Jesus that I'm going now, but I will come back soon. He said this to them. And this is why the Christians expect Isa والسلام, to come back. What is the lesson for us? The lesson for us is don't forget the message of Ashura. Stand up against injustice at all cost. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide doors and open doors for you that you never thought would open. And Allah will provide you victory from where you never even thought you would get victory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your task easier and give you victory and give victory and save you and the believers. That is the message of Ashura. And so the Prophet ﷺ also marked this day of Ashura, the day where it was the last supper of Jesus and that has been mentioned in the Quran and also the day where Musa was saved and his people and Fir'aun was drowned. Both of these events are mentioned in Quran. And the Prophet is fasting on that day, Ashura. The message is that when you are true to Allah and you stand up against the injustice, this is the day, this is the day. This is the day in Islam, Ashura. This is the day in Islam. You know, that is the day of celebration, of standing against tyrants. That is Ashura. That is the message of Ashura. That is the foundational aspect of 
the day of Ashura, the fasting, that you have to, that it is sunnah to fast on this day. And the day before with this day, or the day after with this day, I will explain the rulings a little bit in a little bit. But the main message is, this is the day, what? You stand up against injustice. And so, the day after the fasting of Ramadan, that's also fasting. <coughs> and the, the, the fasting in the month of Ramadan followed by Eid. Hajj followed by Eid. And this day is also a celebration because why? The Prophet told us to spend on our families. And I'm going to share with you those narrations just in the English language and just very quickly and then give you some of the rulings that come along with this, especially from the Hanafi fiqh. Okay? Because I can only teach what I really know. So, Bismillah, the first point I want to make is this month, Muharram, Shahrullah. The Prophet called it the month of Allah. This Shahrullah, this month of Allah, actually was not known as Muharram. Out of all of the month's names, they're all from Jahiliya, meaning before Islam, they're the same. The only month whose name changed by the Prophet wasallam, it was used to be called Safar Awwal, the first Safar. But the Prophet changed it to Muharram, the, the sacred month, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The special month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the month of Muharram, which has its own benefits, which I'm not going to talk about right now. But in that is the day of Ashura. And the day of Ashura is the day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's, so Muharram is the new beginning, the new, new calendar. Okay. And the day of Ashura is the 10th of Muharram. And the 10th of Muharram is the day that is symbolized in Islam that the injustice of the world will fall. Doing good deeds in the sacred months, the four sacred months, okay, which the Quran mentions and also the Hadith also mentions the same thing. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as, as sanatu ithnata asha shahran, a year is 12 months. Minha arba'atu hurum. Four of those months out of the 12 years are sacred. And in these sacred months, the general rule is try to increase your good deeds and decrease your bad deeds. And you get more reward for good deeds and more sins for the bad deeds and more reward for the good deeds in these months. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Three of them are consecutive. And the Prophet then mentions them. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. And the fourth is Rajab, which is the month that we pray the dua for Balighna Ramadan. Barik lana Rajab wa Sha'ban wa Balighna Ramadan. So these are sacred months and then Muharram is also the beginning of the year and Muharram is uh, amongst the sacred months. So it's special already because it's a sacred month. But then in that sacred month, one of the special things about it is that what? It has has the Ashura, the Yomush, yeah, the day of Ashura. One thing that is special about Ashura, very interesting from a theological perspective, from comparative religion perspective, is that there's no religion that talks more about other religions than Islam. And there's no religion that is more open to the goodness that is in other religions than Islam. And there's no religion that's more critical of the wrongs of other religion than Islam. I thought that would be an interesting point that I heard from a sheikh. Okay, so let's continue. In a relatively weak narration, but it's worth mentioning, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمُ الْعَرَفَةَ كَانَ لَهُ كَفَّارَةُ سَنَتَيْنِ Whoever fasts in the day of Arafa, he has the kafara of expiation of his minor sins for two years. وَمَنْ صَامَ يَوْمًا مِنَ الْمُحَرَّمِ And whoever fasts any of the days of Muharram, فَلَهُ لِكُلِّ يَوْمٍ ثَلَاثُونَ يَوْمًا 
And for every day he fasts in the month of Muharram, every one day will be like he fasted 30 days or an entire month. This narration is weak. But there's a Sahih Hadith in Sahih Muslim in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Afdalus Sayyam, the most, most uh, virtuous uh, fasts, Ba'da Ramadan, after Ramadan, Ashahrullahi Muharram, is the month of Allah Muharram. Okay. Over here I will read several, ta ta several of the Tabi'een and other scholars have selected Muharram as the best of these four months. Hafiz ibn Rajab, the Hanbali scholar says, the best part of month of Muharram is the first 10 days. In another narration, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahtasab ala Allahi, I hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an yakfuru sanata allati qablahu, that for the coming year, by fasting in this, uh, the fasting the day of Ashura, the day of Ashura, a one year's worth of sins will be forgiven. So over here, I want to now add some of the fiqhi parts. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reports that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was informed that the Jews and the Christians revere and honor the 10th of Muharram. So the Prophet said, next year, I will also fast the 9th. Now from here, what the scholars said, as long as you're not fasting only Ashura, if you want to fast only Ashura, like the Prophet only fasted Ashura, because he never, when he when he fasted the, uh, the or when he fasted Ashura, and then he found out the Jews also fasted. Then he said, "Well, next year I will also fast the ninth. So Ashura is the tenth. So he said, "I'll do the ninth. So there is a valid opinion that you can only fast one day, which is the day of Ashura, because that's what the Prophet did, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But to be different from the Jews and to say that we have more rights. Then the Prophet added the ninth. But scholars, in addition to that, said that as long as you fast another day with Ashura, so it could be the ninth and the tenth, and then they extrapolated from that that the intent was nine and ten or ten and eleven. Okay? So that's uh, what the Fuqaha have said, that you fast the ninth and the tenth. That's better. And if not that, then... Uh, the tenth and the eleventh, and if not that, then the tenth itself for Sunnah and your preceding sins of the year will be uh, forgiven. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh said, "Fast on the day of Ashura and oppose the Jews by doing what? Fast one day before it or one day after it." So the Prophet didn't say this, but Ibn Abbas, this is how he understood it. So even though the Prophet said, I'll do the ninth, Ibn Abbas, the companion of the Prophet, understood, uh, he'll, you can either do nine and ten or ten and eleven. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La tasumu yomu sabt. Don't fast only Saturday. Yomu sabt is this is the special day of the Jewish people. Don't only fast that day. If you're going to fast that day, then what? Then also fast with another day. So if you do Saturday, do also Sunday. And there's another narration of the Prophet ﷺ in which the Prophet said, don't fast on Fridays. So if you do Friday, then, but of course, the Prophet, إلا uh, whatever has been made, fard upon you, that's the exception. Also, if it is your habit, like you're doing the fasting of Dawud ﷺ, which is you fast one day, don't fast one day, fast one day, don't fast one day. If you do that, then those that will override but if you're just specifically fasting on Saturday, this is kind of, it's not impermissible, it's not haram, it's just disliked, okay? And the same thing with fr Friday. If you're fasting on Friday, only Friday, this is also disliked, okay? So for both of these religious days, Friday and Saturday, right? لا تصوم من أحدكم يوم الجمعة إلا يوم قبله أو بعده Let none of you fast, any of you, on the day of Jum'ah, except that he also fasts the day either before it or the day after it. So either Thursday, Friday, or Friday, and then Saturday. There's a narration of the Prophet ﷺ by the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. يَصُومُ يَوْمُ السَّبْتُ وَيَوْمُ الْأَحَدُ أَكْثَرْ مِمَّا يَصُومُ مِنْ أَيَّامِ The Prophet ﷺ would fast on Saturdays and Sundays more than any other days. Just one narration on 
the importance of Ashura. Uh, Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu he said, okay, so he heard Mu'awiyah bin Abu Sufyan say on the member, on the day of Ashura in the year he went on Hajj, O people of Medina, where are your men of knowledge? Where are your ulama? I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, this is the day of Ashura, Allah is not, Allah has not made fasting obligatory, but I am fasting, meaning it's my way, even though Allah hasn't, but it's coming from me, my sunnah. Whoever wishes can fast, and whoever wishes need not fast. Okay, so this is to show you that a companion of the Prophet, a Khalifa of the Muslims, is seeing Muslims not practicing Ashura, which is just sunnah. And he was telling the people of Medina in, in the days of Hajj, Hey, why aren't you fasting the day of Ashura? It's not obligatory, but the Prophet was doing it. This should give you an idea how the companions of the Prophet saw the status of the Sunnah of the Prophet Now this narration is very interesting because over here, remember what we read in Quran, awalina wal akhira. Over here, it refers to akhirin, the people of the last end days. What does the Prophet say? Now listen, this is very important for you to pass on and to teach others about the importance of Ashura in the end times. Ya Rasulullah, the Prophet was asked, O Messenger of Allah, ayy shahr ta'muruni an asumu ba'da shahr Ramadan. A companion of the Prophet ﷺ said, O Messenger of Allah, which month, which fast do you recommend me to do after the month of Ramadan? Meaning after Inni kuntu sa'iman ba'da Ramadan. If I was to fast after the month of Ramadan. Ramadan. Okay, so the Prophet ﷺ said, if you wished, I'm just going to read the English. If you wish to fast after Ramadan, then fast in Muharram, meaning this. For indeed it is the month of Allah, it is the day in which Allah accepted the repentance of a nation. Which nation? Could be the nation of the people of Musa wasalam, among others. And in which he will accept the repentance of the people of the last age. Let me show you the Arabic here. وَيَتُوبُ فِيهِ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِ الْآخِرِينَ And those people who will come after in the Akhiru Zaman. Allah will accept their repentance on the fasting of this day. Allahumma taqabbal minna. May Allah accept from us. Okay? What else can be done in the month of Ashura? One of the most important things about this day is قَالَ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ وَسَعَ عَلَىٰ أَيَالِهِ يَوْمُ عَشُورًا Whoever expends, makes more, increases on his family on the day of Ashura, then what? وَسَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فَسَائِرِ السَّنَةِ Then Allah will make His sustenance for the rest of the year if He spends on His family on this day, on the day of Ashura. Okay? Meaning, He makes it like an Eid. He makes it like a celebration. One of the ways that our pious predecessors used to know if something is true or not true in the Hadith literature is they would simply try something the Prophet said. So let me just read this part, tried and tested. Furthermore, several narrators of this Hadith have reported to have echoed the following testimony. We have tried this and we have found it to be accurate. Meaning the hadith is accurate because we tried this and it worked. This further strengthens the credibility of the narration. In fact, one narrator of this hadith, the great muhaddis faqih Sufyan bin Uyayna said, I've been doing this for 40 to 60 years and have always seen its benefit. Imam Bujuri has written, when the chains of this narration are all gathered, they acquire credibility. So anyway, it continues. But spending on your family on the day of Ashura is of great benefit. And according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. There is a narration that's weak. But again, it's one of those that's been tried and tested. Whoever on the first of Muharram writes down the entire Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim on a piece of paper 313 times, the same number of times that is found in the beginning of Qur'an, and keeps it with him will be saved from all types of calamities and misfortunes. Mawlana Muhammad Shafi Rahmatullah who was a great scholar of Islam, has mentioned that in his prescription, 
has mentioned this and it's tried and tested practice without necessarily being sourced from the Quran or Hadith even though there's no Quran or Hadith that's authentic can be found regarding this but he said there's no harm in practicing upon this especially since Mufti Muhammad Shafi has stated that it has been tried and tested as long as one does not deem it to be Sunnah or to be binding. So if somebody wants to next year try that, they can try that. About the Prophet saying that we have more rights to fast, uh, Mulaqari Ali says, one of the great Hanafi scholars, has explained that as Muslims we confirm to the core principles of Musa Alayhi deen and testify to the sanctity of uh, um, Torah to a much higher degree than Jews themselves, meaning we love Torah more than the Jews do. And we love Musa والسلام, more than the Jews do. So we have more rights. They, on the other hand, do not express the same type of reverence as they have altered, changed, falsely interpolate, interpolated many aspects of both Torah and their religion. Since the Jews decided to fast on the day of Ashura because Musa والسلام, observed its fast, then we as Muslims, having a greater connection to Musa والسلام, through both our creed and conduct, are, are honor-bound to a higher degree, and we ought to fa fast as well. This is a statement of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, in which he says, اِخْتَصَلَّهُ أَرْبَدَ عَشْحُرٌ جَعَلَهُنَّ حَرَمًا وَعَذَمًا uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the four months distinct, and he has made them sacred, okay? And has increased their sacredness. He's made sinning in them. The sin in there is greater. And the reward of doing good deeds a great, even greater. So this is the statement of Ibn Abbas about these sacred months. One of the gifts that the Prophet ﷺ gave to this ummah on because of Ashura. The Prophet ﷺ would revere the day of Ashura so much that he would call the suckling children and Fatima's suckling children, meaning weaning children, and instruct their mothers not to feed them till night. Meaning, why? Because the Prophet would place his saliva in their mouths, the baby's mouths, and that would suffice them against hunger. So he did this like special, uh, you can say, ma'adza or kirama uh, for children and to give the, what? A, a good deed towards the mothers that are tired suckling the children. So he said, take a rest, you don't have to. And he gave his saliva to the little children and that would suffice for them and their hunger. And he did this on Ashura. And so the narration says, كَانَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The Prophet had such honor for the month of Ashura. Okay. حَتَّى إِذَا كَانَ you know, he would have these little babies uh, being uh, fed by the mother and he would give uh, release to the mothers from that uh, situation. So in the hadith and the fiqh aspect of this, let me just end by this narration. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, he says this, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas says, was asked regarding the fasting in Ashura, he said, I'm unaware, unaware of Rasulullah singling out a day to fast, seeking its reward, except this day, meaning Ashura, and the month of Ramadan, meaning that this would be after Ramadan, his number one day to fast would be this day of Ashura. So we saw the Jewish Messiah story and we saw the Christian Passover or Ashura story and how it connects with the day where the Last Supper happened and the Dua of Isa والسلام, and it is that day that is the Passover, it is that day that is the Passover that Musa والسلام, is saved from Fir'aun that day is Passover Ashura and how Allah says this will be a sign for the first and the last and the Prophet وسلم, specifically saying in the hadith that the last of them that fast on this day will be forgiven and being forgiven on this day is a condition for what? Victory and this day represents what? Standing up against tyrants, deliverance from Allah, help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all levels. And so 
so it will be that in the end of times, Muslims should focus on fasting in the, the day of Ashura. And remember, again, once again, that, that Eid, that the coming back of the Messiah, this is the day that one has to remember that Allah's help is coming and the Messiah is coming and standing up against injustice the way Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam did and the way the way Mahdi alayhi salatu wasalam will do in the future. So now, let me just uh, very quickly play kind of like a history of Ashura from a video. And I'm going to play it a little bit fast so you can hear it a little bit fast, but it kind of like summarizes a lot of the things. And then you can add on to that the things that I said about the link between Musa Isa and Prophet Muhammad Ashura and the end of times. Okay, so with that, now let's listen to this. <coughs> As Ibn Kathir said, Allah selects from the days. He has created certain days which are most blessed and special than others. According to Imam Al-Ghazali, writing in his Mukhashb al-Bulub, Umar bin Khattab was asked why the day of Ashura was considered so noble. Umar listed a few events which had taken place in Ashura. Allah created the skies and earth on this day, along with the preserved tablet. Allah created Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah created Adam alayhi salam, as well as Hawa alayhi salam. Allah created Jannah. Allah enabled Adam alayhi salam to live in Jannah. The day the repentance of Adam alayhi salam was accepted. The first rain to fall on earth was in Ashura. Therefore, since before the beginning of human history, Ashura has been filled with significant events. It was on this day, Ashura, that the Ark of Nuh alayhi salam came to rest on Mount Judah. The day Ibrahim alayhi salam was born. The day he was saved from the fire. The day Yusuf alayhi salam is taken out of the well. The day Ya'qub alayhi salam regained his life. <coughs> the day the illness of Ayyub alayhi salam disappeared. The day Musa alayhi salam and his people were saved from Fir'aun. The day the great kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam was bestowed upon him. The day Yunus alayhi salam was saved from the whale's stomach. The day Isa alayhi salam was raised up to the heavens. Thus Allah tested his prophets alayhi salam on Ashura and blessed them and saved them and forgave them and took them back to him. It is thus unsurprising that not only did the Jews commemorate Ashura, even the Quraysh of pre-Islamic Mecca recognized its importance. Aisha radiallahu anha said, the people used to fast on Ashura before the fasting of Ramadan was made obligatory. And on that day, the Kaaba used to be covered with a cover. This is from Al-Bukhari. But it is impossible to mention how Allah tested his servants on Ashura without mentioning Hussein radiallahu anha, the son of Ali radiallahu anha, and the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which took place on the day of Ashura was a battle of Karbala. <coughs> Since the beginning of human history, Ashura has been filled with significant events. We begin with the story of Adam and Eve. One learns that pride and arrogance is the key to loss and destruction. Further lessons include the value of acknowledging errors, the virtue of repenting, and the power of supplication. The test in paradise was an essential lesson that demonstrated free will. To be able to live on earth, Adam and Eve learned about the devil's deception, the consequence of sin, and the mercy of the Creator. This was the dua of Adam. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Meaning our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be amongst the losers. The respite of Prophet Nuh salam, on Ashura for around 950 years, he called his people to Allah. Yet in all that time, only a small group of people believed in him. The rest of his people were filled with enmity and hostility towards him. In Nuh's own words, as related by Allah, he said, My Lord, indeed I invited my people to truth night and day. But my invitation increased them not, except in flight. And indeed, every time I invite them, that you may forgive them, they put their fingers in their ears, covered themselves with their garments, persisted and were arrogant with great arrogance. Then I invited them publicly, then I announced to them, and I also confided to them secretly. And I said, ask forgiveness of your Lord. Indeed, he is ever a perpetual forgiver. He will send rain from the sky upon you and continuing showers, and give you increase in wealth and children, and provide for you gardens, and provide for you rivers. Yet they rejected him. For almost a thousand years, he appealed to their hearts and minds to recognize the truth of Allah's grandeur. Yet they hated him and ridiculed him. Finally, Allah ordered Nuh salam to build an ark, and afterwards sent a flood upon the earth, which only the passengers of the ark survived. The waves were as high as the mountains, and the rain fell for months. Eventually, Allah stopped the rain, and the earth swallowed the water. In a narration reported by Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, it was on this day of Ashura that the ark of Nuh salam came to rest on Mount Judi. That's from Tafsir ibn Kathir. That Allah chose this day to bring his devoted servant back to land, along with the believers. Marks it out as one of the elite days in the year. The day Ibrahim salam was born. The day he was saved from the fire. Ibrahim salam was the only Muslim alive in the entire world at that time. Imagine that. Not a single Muslim 
he faced the Hood, one of the most tyrannical, vicious, and powerful rulers in the world. Destroying the idols became a national issue. How dare he destroy their gods? The fire was lit by his people and fueled for three days. He knew he was going to be thrown into the fire. As soon as he got to the edge of the fire, this young boy alone, without a single source of support, not even from his own father, said these beautiful set of words. Hasban Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Sufficient for us is Allah, and he is the best disposer of affairs. These words changed his entire faith. When it came from the heart, it meant, Oh Allah, you are all that I need. I don't need anybody else. I don't need an army. I don't need the world to come and save me. Hasbi Allah. I only need Allah. Hasbi Allah. You alone, O oh Allah, are the powerful, the all-seeing. You know my situation. You see my affairs. You can control the situation. O oh Allah, I only need you. It was on this day of Ashura that Yusuf salam was taken out of the well. Allah narrates to us about Yusuf's trouble, joy, and sorrow. He saw how jealousy, hatred, deception, and terror was unleashed against Yusuf's personality, yet he conquered with patience, bravery, honesty, and reliance on Allah. This, in the long run, led him to be among the victorious. He then makes this dua, expressing this gratitude towards Allah. Anta waliyyi fi dunya, wal akhirati tawaffini muslima, wal hikni bisalihin, meaning you are my protector, in this world and in the hereafter. Cause me to die a Muslim and join me with the righteous. He says this as if being righteous was something he aspires to be and has not yet achieved. SubhanAllah. Remember, he's making this dua after being betrayed by his brothers, sold as a slave, falsely imprisoned, and worked his way out and to the top. The process of constantly improving, reaching for more, becoming better, is a journey that never ends and seems like a lesson that Yusuf salam has internalized. We also find that on this day of Ashura, the illness of Ayyub salam disappeared. Quranic exegetes, historians, and others said that Ayyub, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was a wealthy man who owned all kinds of wealth, such as cattle, sheep, and servants, and vast property in a place called Quran in Rome. He also had many children and a large family. Then all of this was taken away from him. His body was inflicted with different kinds of illnesses, to such an extent that there was no part of his body that was healthy except his heart and tongue with which he remembered Allah. All throughout this, he remained patient. His illnesses prolonged for such a long time that even his friends deserted him and his relatives stayed away from him. He was expelled from his town and thrown upon a dung hill. SubhanAllah. Everybody left him except his wife who fulfilled her duties. It came to such an extent that she became weak and her money almost finished. She was in such a difficult situation that she started working to earn wages in order to provide for her husband. May Allah be pleased with her. He supplicated to Allah. And Ayyub when he called his Lord saying, Harm has inflicted me and you are the most merciful. This word of Prophet Ayyub, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is one which is filled with lessons for us to ponder over. The virtue of patience is shown to us in the Prophet Ayyub through some of the most dire situations that one can come across in life. Ibn Abbas عنه, reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, came to Medina, and he found the Jews fasting on the day of Ashura. The Prophet said, what is this day you are fasting? They said, this is a great day in which Allah saved Moses and his people, and he drowned Pharaoh and his people. Moses fasted on it due to gratitude, so we also fast on it. The Prophet ﷺ said, We have more of a right to Moses and are closer to him than you. The Prophet ﷺ fasted the day of Ashura and commanded fasting on it. After years of anguish, the Israelites fled in the middle of the night to escape bondage until they reached the Red Sea. The Israelites exclaimed to Moses that they would be overtaken by Pharaoh and his army. The Quran narrates, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa to strike the Red Sea with his staff, instructing them not to fear being overtaken or drowning. Upon striking the sea, it divided into two parts that allowed the Israelites to pass through. Pharaoh, Fir'aun, witnessed the sea splitting alongside his army. But as they also tried to pass through, the sea closed in on them. Musa السلام, therefore began the tradition of fasting on the day of Ashura as a form of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was on this day, the great kingdom of Sulaiman was bestowed upon him. So when Prophet Sulaiman السلام, became king, he made dua to Allah asking for a kingdom that no one has ever had or ever will have. Yeah. Those of you that are aware of and studying Islamic eschatology also understand the importance of Suleiman and his kingdom. <laughs> Meaning, my Lord, forgive me and grant me a kingdom such as will not belong to anyone after me. Indeed, you are the bestower. Prophet Suleiman was given a kingdom like no one had ever seen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also granted him the power to command winds, control both men and jinns, and he could understand the speech of ants. The power that Prophet Suleiman had would have corrupted many men, but it did not corrupt him because he was always grateful. The day of Ashura was a day when Yunus alayhi salam was saved from the whale's stomach. Yunus alayhi salam tried to show them the foolishness and idolatry and destructive path they were on, but they ignored him. So Yunus alayhi salam decided himself that they were beyond saving and his efforts would be appreciated elsewhere. So he left. Yunus alayhi salam denied his responsibility without Allah's consent and sailed away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a storm for Yunus alayhi salam because he could not deny his destiny. 
he would need to reconcile and repent. A whale came to the surface and swallowed Yunus alayhi salam, who was thrown overboard and took him into deep waters, where he was engulfed into three layers of darkness, the night, the sea, and inside the belly of the whale. Here, he recited this dua for forgiveness, La ilaha illa ant, subhanaka inni guntu min al meaning there is no deity except you. Exalted are you. Indeed, I have been of the wrongdoers. In the darkest moment in Yunus alayhi salam's life, he remembered and turned to Allah. He realized his oneness and exalted him. In a vulnerable and desperate position, he becomes closer to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to his call and freed Yunus. In the Quran, Allah says, Is he not best who responds to the desperate one when he calls upon him and removes evil and makes you inheritors of the earth? Is there a deity with Allah? Little do you remember. It was also on this day that Isa alayhi salam was raised to the heavens. Before we go to Isa, if you remember in the hadith, when we were going over the hadith, the Prophet said, It is a day where Allah has forgiven nations. One of the nations that was forgiven was the people of Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, in addition to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Heavens. And remember when Allah <coughs> said, O oh Jesus, I will take you and raise you to myself and clear you of the fourth statement that Jesus is Allah's son, of those who disbelieve. And I will make those who follow you, monotheists, meaning upon Tawheed, those who worship none but Allah, superior to those who disbelieve in the oneness of Allah. Then you will return to me and I will judge between you in the matters in which you used to dispute. But the most tragic incident which took place on the day of Ashura was a battle of Karbala. This battle took place between a small entourage consisting of the family and companions of Hussein bin Ali radiallahu anhu, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and son of the fourth caliph, Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, against the military troops sent by Yazid ibn Muawiyah, the Umayyad caliph at that time. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu was slew in 661. A power vacuum emerged, leading to Muawiyah assuming the role of caliph. <coughs> After years of conflict, Hassan radiallahu anhu signed a peace treaty with Muawiyah. This treaty stipulated that Muawiyah would not appoint a successor after him. In the year 670, Hassan was slew, leaving his brother Hussein to take on his duties. The treaty was breached when Muawiyah named his son Yazid as his successor. Yazid spread his power through corruption, bribery, and use of violence. To legitimize his rule, Yazid demanded the allegiance from Hussein. Hussein refused as Yazid was openly corrupt. So Hussein radiallahu anhu was forced to flee Medina under the threat of imprisonment and assassination. <laughs> then he had received thousands of letters from Kufa, Iraq, pledging support for an uprising against Yazid. So Hussein radiallahu anhu finally sent Muslim bin Aqil radiallahu anhu to fight out the state of Kufa. When he got there, Muslim ibn Aqil wrote a letter to Hussein radiallahu anhu telling him that the people of Kufa were ready to welcome him. Yazid heard the presence of Muslim ibn Aqil radiallahu anhu in Kufa and he then ordered someone to slay him. He also changed the governor of Kufa from Nu'man ibn Bissab to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu and his companions consisting of 128 people departed from Medina to Kufa. It was only when on the road that he received the news of the death of Muslim ibn Aqil radiallahu anhu but he still decided to continue his journey to Kufa. As they approached Kufa, Hussein's caravan was intercepted by a battalion of Yazid's army, led by a man named Hur, a great army which numbered in the thousands, led by Umar ibn Sa'id, joined him, and surrounded Hussein's camp in what is now known as Karbala and modern-day Iraq. The army cut off access to water for Hussein radiallahu anh, and his family, leaving the men, women, and children to suffer from days of thirst in Iraq's blistering desert heat. The army demanded allegiance from Hussein radiallahu anh, threatening him with death. Despite all the odds, Hussein radiallahu anh, refused to back down. He said, I am ready to fight for the sole goal of seeking the reform of the Ummah, of my grandfather, and the Prophet of Allah. I want to enjoy good and forbid evil. On the third day, without water, a group of 50 men, led by his half-brother, Abbas ibn Ali radiallahu anh, managed to draw water from the river, even though they could only fill 20 water skins. Then he was surrounded by hundreds of soldiers who tried to prevent him from taking water. He kept running to deliver the water, even though stones and arrows rained down on him from all sides, until an arrow hit the water bags he was carrying. He started to lose hope at the moment, until a man hit him on the head. He fell to the ground. Hussein radiallahu anh immediately came to him. Abbas then died on Hussein's lap. Before the battle, Hussein radiallahu anh delivered a speech. Hussein told his companions that they were free to leave, but they pledged to stand beside him in the face of uncertain defeat, reminding the Umayyad soldiers to return to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which resulted in Hur ibn Yazid and several others turned to defend Hussein radiallahu anh. The battle commenced with Hussein's 70 odd companions of what many historians number to be 30,000. The companions of Hussein radiallahu anh fought group by group and were taken out on the battlefield. Eventually, Hussein radiallahu anh was left with a handful of remaining family members. They too were also taken out. While Hussein radiallahu anh, who had been seriously injured, continued to fight Ibn Sa'd's troops until he died because a poison arrow hit him. To this day, the death of Hussein radiallahu anh are commemorated by Sunni and Shia Muslims on the 10th of Muharram, every year on the Islamic calendar, which peaks on the 10th day, commonly known as Ashura. When Ashura arrives this year, remember it is a day of tests and relief on which even the Prophet ﷺ and their families and followers were tested. It is a day which Allah has placed in His own month, Muharram, which is called the month of Allah. It is a day where we should truly feel close to Him, asking only Him for relief from any hardship we're facing, and thanking only Him for our ease and comfort. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our past sins on the blessed day of Ashura as he forgave the people of Yunus alayhi salam. May he relieve us of hardship as he relieved the people of Musa alayhi salam from hardship. May he lift any burdens from our loved ones as he lifted the burdens of his servant Ayyub alayhi salam. May Allah bless us and provide for us as he blessed Sulaiman alayhi salam. May he give us the opportunity to do good for his sake and multiply our rewards on blessed Ashura and beyond. May Allah make us among those whom he loves and bring us close to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Ameen. Let me end by... Uh, mentioning that it is also the day Umar radiallahu anh, the day that Umar radiallahu anh, was also killed and many other important events happened and as you know Umar was the door that stopped the Fitans from coming so that was also broken the door was broken with the death of Umar so inshallah we'll end here for today I hope this day of Ashura shows you how the Jewish Passover, the rising of Isa والسلام, these two events particularly emphasized in the tradition of Islam. And what is their link? Fir'aun is similar to Dajjal and Isa is the Messiah, the true Messiah. So these two, right? These two are linked with Ashura and Ashura is linked with what? The end of times, according to Sutul Ma'idah, that it is a sign for the believers and a sign for the first ones, first of them, that got this supper with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now let me share this part with you, it's very, very important, that before I leave, I say this to you, that what what is meant by it's a sign? That the... Allahumma, O oh Allah, send down a table from the heavens, from them. And Allah says it'll be a day of rejoice for the first of them and the last of them. For the first of them, the rejoicing was the coming down from the heavens, the food. And the rising of Isa, <clears throat> And for the last of them will be what? will be the coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and it will be a time of very, very, very little food. Let me show you what the narration in the hadith says about the time with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. That day with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, it says in Sayyid Bukhari, there was once water there, meaning in the lake Tiberias, there's no water. And Jesus and his companions then would be besieged he here in the mountain of Tur. And the head of an ox would be dearer to them than 100 dinars. Why? Because there's no food. And then they again over there will supplicate to Allah. And victory will come to them on that day. Because it will be a special day. And so, what do you find? Isa alayhi salatu wasalam prayed to Allah, Allah send down to us a table of food. So it will be a day of Eid. For the first of us and the last of us. And it will be a sign from you. So this day of Ashura symbolizes great events. Particularly great events in the end of times. When you combine the previous stories of, of Musa and Isa particularly, and then the others, including the kingdom of Sulaiman And then you look at this dua that he's doing, dua that Allah send down upon us food. And on that day when you will be with Isa, he will come down, but there will be no food. And when they were with Isa, they had Isa. Isa went, uh, the food came down. And then Isa went up. And now Isa will come down and the food will be raised. And Allah knows best. <clears throat> so something to inshallah think about and ponder, probably further analyze and think about this. But I think I will end here. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولساء المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته